So Mary, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You've exposed the whole Trump family in this book. And the common theme, the prime motivator, undoubtedly seems to be money. What is it about that? When it comes to the Trumps, it's all about money. Yeah. Um, you know, I used to think that, and it's it's certainly true, um, you know, that's a huge part of what has driven the people in this family. And when you consider that money is the only currency in the family, I mean, it literally stands in for everything else, love, affection, respect. It's understandable that, uh, you know, my uh, family members would cling to it so desperately and, and want to acquire it because there's also this sense um, that everything in life is a zero sum game. So it's, if you gave away something to somebody else, particularly money, that would mean that they have more and you have less and you are literally and metaphorically speaking worthless. So um, that's a very clear um, through line uh, from my grandfather until the present uh, in terms of how the family values uh, money and, and truly thinks, thinks it is more important than anything else. It, it must have been hard growing up in, in that atmosphere. You're saying that money was the, the currency of emotion and the whole gamut of how you valued everything. Luckily, children are very often unaware of these things. I had no idea. You know, um, I lived in a, the town next to my grandparents, uh, which was vastly different. My grandparents lived in a very upper middle class, very white uh, town. Where I lived, it was sort of lower middle class, working class, a pr predominantly African-American. And yeah, my grandfather would send his limo over on Sundays to pick us up to take us to their house. But I didn't, you know, I knew it was weird, but I, I didn't experience myself as growing up in a really rich family. At the centre of all the dysfunction, all the problems, appears to be your grandfather, the president's father, Fred. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Oh, yeah. He, he is uh, the origin. He's the ground zero of all of the family dysfunction, for sure. You would call him, what, the arch villain? Yeah. I, you know, I say this very straightforwardly in the book and, um, you know, I stand by it. I believe that he was a sociopath. A sociopath. I mean, coming from yeah. a trained clinical psychologist, that's a big call. That's a harsh call, Mary. He made it very easy, unfortunately. Um, you know, he had a very limited range of human emotion. He had no real human feeling for anybody, including his children, and was quite adept at using people to his own ends. And if he found them not to be of use, he had no compunction about discarding them. And that certainly is what happened to my dad. Was he a cruel man? Yeah, yes. He enjoyed humiliating other weaker people a great deal. It's funny, isn't it? Because despite all the money, despite all the millions, there is a sort of a mean streak running through the Trumps. Yeah, I, you know, that's something I've never really understood. Of course, as I said, I didn't quite know just how wealthy the family was when I was growing up and, and actually not really until I was well into adulthood. And I, it's a mystery to me how people who are so privileged and who have been so fortunate and who have had every advantage at their at disposal could be so ungrateful, you know, and um, not have use that privilege to uh, become better people or to be generous. It's, it's quite astonishing. Um, and somebody like that should not be leading a country. What is it about Donald's insistence on describing everything on grandiose terms? Nothing can ever be normal or fine or just good. It always has to be great, fantastic or tremendous. What is it about that? That again is something that started young. Um, you know, my my father was a, a pretty self-effacing, sensitive guy, and um, my grandfather hated that. Um, so and didn't think he was good enough uh, because he wasn't, um, you know, interested in the things my grandfather was interested in. I guess. So Donald learned that in order to 
be protected from, not just protected from his father, but favored by his father. He needed to be this larger than life, great, fantastic, you know, part of it was the toxic positivity and part of it was just, you know, having to convince Fred Trump Sr. that he was, that Donald belonged on the planet and, um, you know, should survive and should succeed. And he needed to make it clear to Fred that Donald could be of use to him. Excellent, fantastic, unbelievable. So his father, your grandfather, did he use the same sort of phrases? Is that what his world was all about? Did he describe things the same way? Everything's great. Everything's great. My, my grandmother would be lying in a hospital bed that we'd set up in the, that they'd set up in the, the library in the house in agony. She had osteoporosis and broke bones all the time. Um, and, you know, be doing physical therapy at home in agony. And he would just come in and say, everything's great, right, Toots? And, and she'd be, you know, biting her lips to keep from screaming. And then he'd leave because he didn't want to deal with, you know, her weakness, her pain. It just, it was unbearable to him. Everything had to be great at all times. So it when was, you, it was psychotic. So when you see your uncle, the president, do it now, when you hear that, uh, do you laugh or, or does that send chills up your spine? No, it's it's not funny. Um, it's It's one of his, it's part of his pathology. And I think what people may not understand is when Donald's saying that, the only person he's talking to and the only person he's trying to convince is my grandfather, who died 20 years ago. The rest of the family uh, is in the story. It wasn't about um, exposing anybody, but uh, it really is a story about a family. Um, it was impossible to isolate uh, Donald or my grandfather or my father, although they, they are the central players in the story. But you know, all five siblings uh, grew up in the same house and uh, were affected to varying degrees of, and in different ways, but they were all damaged by what they experienced as children. Um, so there was really no way to tell the story without uh, including them. I don't attack anybody personally, um, but I needed to tell the story of the family, the origin story, um, because there's so much at stake. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.